this model, the second model of chapter 19, we're going to talk about the third law of thermodynamic. Also, we're going to well, work some exercises and examples of entropy. And at the end, we're going to talk about the um, free energy, Gibbs free energy, that was going to help us to determine the spontaneity of a reaction. So by the end of this chapter of, or this model, you'll be able to state the third law of thermodynamics. You will be able to calculate the standard entropy changes for a system from standard molar entropies. Also, you will be able to calculate the entropy changes in the surroundings for isothermal processes. Calculate the Gibbs free energy from the enthalpy change and entropy change at a given temperature. You will use the free energy changes to predict whether reactions are spontaneous or not. You will calculate standard free energy changes using standard free energies formation. You will predict the effect of temperature on spontaneity given the delta H or and the change in entropy. And you will calculate the delta G under non-standard conditions. And finally, you will relate the delta G standard and equilibrium constant. So the third law of thermodynamics established that the entropy of a pure crystalline substance at absolute zero is zero. So at absolute zero, as we can see here, okay, the entropy for this pure solid is also zero. This at absolute zero. Consider all atoms or molecules in the perfect lattice at zero kelvins. There will only be one microstate. So if we're going to have just one microstate, we can look for the um, equation of entropy that we mentioned in the um, previous model. We have the constant times the natural logarithm of W, that this means microstate. So if it's just one microstate, the logarithm, natural logarithm of 1 is 0, so the entropy is going to be 0. So that's why at absolute 0, also the entropy is 0. Standard entropies. The reference for entropy is 0 Kelvin. So the values for elements are not 0 Kelvin or 0 joules moles times Kelvin at 298 Kelvin. Okay, so at 0 Kelvin, that's the reference point. But most of the elements are expressed in 298 Kelvin. And at, those va and at this temperature, the values are different as 0. The standard molar entropies for gases are generally greater than liquids and solids. And we expect that because remember that entropy is equal to randomness. And in, ga in gases, the randomness is higher than a liquid and a solid. So we expect that the standard molar entropy is going to be also larger for it. Standard entropies increases with the molar mass. And also the standard entropies increase with number of atoms in a formula. And here we have a table with different um, standard molars entropy for different molecular or substances. As we can see here, hydrogen has a, a standard molar entropy of 130.6 joules uh, divided by moles times Kelvin. Nitrogen has a higher molecule, molar mass, so that's why the entropy is higher. You see? Now here we can uh, look also for the entropy, the standard uh, molar entropy for water as gas and compare that to water as a liquid, and we can see that in gas, the entropy, the standard molar entropy, is higher than for the liquid, as we expected, as we ex explained uh, a few seconds ago. Also, we can see uh, another example here, uh, CH3OH and liquid and gas, the same concept. We can see that increase when you go from liquid to gas. And also, um, we can compare, for example, um, H2O, let's see here, H2O also with CH3OH. We increase the number of atoms and also that um, in, in the case of the liquid with the water liquid is also this two. Increase the number of atoms and also we increase also the uh, standard molar entropy. For that one also H2 and H2O also increase. Uh, you add another atom as oxygen also increase the entropy. So if you go from solid liquids to gas, the standard molar entropy is going to be higher for the gas. If you increase the molar mass, it's going to be higher for the highest molar, molar mass as well as the number of atoms in the formula. So the entropy changes. 
Entropy changes for a reaction can be calculated in a manner analogous to that by which the enthalpy is calculated. So the delta S standard is going to be equal to the sum of N times the delta S standard for the products minus the sum times uh, the sum of M times the delta S standard for the reactants, where N and M are the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So if we have a chemical equation, we look for the standard uh, molar ent ent entropy for each of them, of the products and the reactants. We multiply each of them for the coefficients that are expressed in the um, chemical reaction. And then for the products, we just add them, and the reactant, we add them, and then we subtract products minus reactants, and that will be the entropy of the uh, reaction. Now, what about the entropy changes in the surroundings? Heat that flows into or out of the system change the entropy of the surround. For an isothermal process, an isothermal process is a process that is at the same temperature. The delta S of the surround is equal to minus Q of the system divided by T. Remember that we are talking about the heat flow from the surrounding to the system or from the system to the surrounds. So that means that Q, that is the heat, is to determine the delta S of the surround will be minus the Q of the system because if the system release, the surroundings are going to gain. But if the surrounds release, the system are going to gain. So that's why it's the opposite of the system of the surround. Okay, so that's why you have here a minus because it's the opposite of what happened to the system that is happening to the surround. If the surround gain heat, it means that it was released by the system. If the system gain heat, it was because the surround released it. At constant pressure, the Q of the system is simply the enthalpy for the system. So the delta S for the surrounds is going to be equal to minus the delta H of the system over, delta, over, over T. And this is and why is this? Because remember that the delta H is equal to work times a heat, but because there the pressure is constant, there is no work. So the enthalpy is going to be equal to the heat. So that's why we can substitute this heat to the delta H or the enthalpy of the system. Now the entropy change in the universe. The universe is composed of the system and the surrounding. Therefore, the delta S of the universe is going to be equal to the delta S of the system plus the change of entropy of the surrounds. Now, remember that for spontaneous processes, the delta S of the universe is going to be always larger than zero. It's going to be always positive. Let's talk now about the total entropy and spontaneity, how we can... Um, obtain a, a relationship or, or equation that relates the entropy with spontaneity. Now I'm going to show um, some derivations to found an equation that is the one that we need to learn and we need to know how to, to, to work with it. So let's start with the ones that we know. The delta S of the universe is equal to the delta S of the system plus the delta S of the surround. This is entropy, okay? The entropy of the universe is going to be equal to the entropy of the system plus the entropy of the surrounds. Substitute the entropy of the surrounding by delta S equal to minus delta H over delta T as we saw in a previous slide. So we're going to have something like this. Delta S of the entropy of the universe equal to the entropy of the system minus the enthalpy of the system divided by T. If we then multiply by minus t, we're going to have something like this. Okay, this is going to be the equation where we multiply all of this equation to minus t. Minus t times this is going to be delta h. Minus t times d is going to be minus t delta s. And minus t that times this is going to be minus t delta s of the universe. If we do a rearrangement of this equation, we can have something like this. Okay, where we just uh, put this first and then we put this uh, uh, at the last position. And if we call this product here, the minus T delta S delta G, this will be the equation of the Gibbs free energy. Delta G equals to delta H minus T delta S. 
this equation is going to help us to determine the spontaneity of a system of a reaction. So we can have three possible uh, results or options for the Gibbs free energy. The first one if, is uh, that delta G is negative. If delta G is negative, the forward reaction is spontaneous. The delta G, remember, is that the delta G of the final minus the minus the, del the initial delta G. Okay, so that um, subtraction, if it's negative, the forward reaction is spontaneous. If delta G is zero, the system is at equilibrium. And if delta G is positive, the reaction is spontaneous, but in the reverse direction. Okay, so here we have an example. This is um, nitrogen plus hydrogen producing ammonium. So from here to here, the process is spontaneous because the free energy is decreasing. So this is the final point, for example, and this is the initial. This minus this is going to be negative. That's why this process from here to here is spontaneous. Also, this process from here to here, this is ammonium by itself producing NH, producing hydrogen and, and nitrogen, like another composition. And that process also is spontaneous because as you go for, to this point, you are decreasing the free energy. So this process is also spontaneous. And at this point, delta G is zero because this point they are at, at equilibrium. So the standard free energy changes. Analogous to standard enthalpies of formation and also to the standard um, entropy are standard free energies of formation, the delta G F. So the delta G is a standard delta G is equal to the um, sum of n times the standard free energy of formation of the products minus the sum of m times the delta G, I missed the delta here, the change in G of the reactants, where n and m are coefficients of the stoichiometry, uh, or the stoichiometry coefficient, the coefficient that we can find in the chemical equation. And here is an analogy um, that is shown between the gravitational potential energy change for a bo uh, boulder rolling down a hill and the free energy change here in a spontaneous reaction. Free energy always decreases in a spontaneous process when pressure and temperature are held constant. So from this point to this point, the reaction is going to be spontaneous because the free energy is decreasing from here to here. Now, what is going to happen if we change temperature? Could that affect the spontaneity of a reaction? And the answer is yes, sometimes. So remember that this is our delta G equation. Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And for spontaneity, the delta G must be negative. So if the delta H is negative and the delta S is positive, that means that this is negative and positive times negative is going to be also negative. So when we add both quantities, the delta G is going to be negative. So it's going to be spontaneous. So when this delta H is negative and the delta S is positive, the delta G always is going to be negative and and the reaction is going to be spontaneous for the forward reaction. Now, what happens when we have a delta H minus, and also we have that the delta S is minus? Here we have the following situation because this minus times this minus, this product is going to be positive, and this is negative. So this is going to depend in the temperature. If the temperature is lower, that means that this whole product is going to be lower than this and the delta H is going to be negative and the delta G is going to be negative because this is really small when the temperature is, is, is lower temperature. But if at higher temperature, this number is going to be large and because the delta S is negative, all of this is going to be positive and this will affect this doing that the delta G is going to be positive. So when we have a delta H negative and the delta S negative, at lower temperature, the spontaneous is going to be for the forward reaction. Okay, so because this is going to be lower, 
this make all of this positive value lower than this and the delta G at the end is going to be negative. Now what happens if the delta H is positive and the delta S also is positive? Once again, this is going to depend on the temperature because if we have a lower temperature here, this delta S is positive and this is negative, so all of this product is going to be always negative, okay? But if this is lower, maybe this is, has a larger, larger value and then the delta G is going to be positive. So that's why when both of these values are positive, we need a T, a temperature, a large temperature. So that's why this is going to be negative and the delta G is going to be also negative. So that's going to be um, spontaneous at higher temperature. And what happens if we have a delta H positive and a delta S negative? Delta S negative and T negative, this product is going to be positive. And because this is also positive, that means that the delta G, delta G is going to be larger than zero. It's going to be non-spontaneous, okay, for the forward reaction. So um, here we can see the effect of the temperature and determine the spontaneity of a reaction. Free energy and equilibrium. Under any conditions, standard or non-standard, the free energy change can be found this way. Delta G is equal to delta G standard plus RT times the natural logarithm of Q. Remember that Q is the same as a K, but not necessarily in equilibrium. And because we don't know if we are at equilibrium or not, we use the concept of Q, that this is the concentration of products over the reactant as we uh, know we have discussed previously. Under standard conditions, concentrations are one molar. So Q is going to be equal to one. And if this is equal to one, then all of this is equal to zero because the natural logarithm of one is zero. So all of this product will be zero. And the delta G is going to be equal to the uh, delta G standard, okay? When they are basically at standard conditions. At equilibrium, Q is equal to K, and as we mentioned, the delta G is equal to zero. So the equation becomes zero equal to delta G plus RT, the natural logarithm of K, because now that we are at equilibrium, we can substitute the Q for the K, and we can rearrange this, and, and we have the delta G standard is equal to minus RT, the natural logarithm of K, and also, if we look for the um, exponential of this, we're going to have this equation that relates the equilibrium constant of the reaction equal to E um, power of minus delta G standard divided by RT. And this will help us to uh, relate also the equilibrium constant with the delta G standard for the reaction that we are studying. And with this, we'll finish our model number 19.